Live. It's your Bolo Punch Boxing Hour. I'm brought to you by George Rogie Insurance, www.hssb.cc, sportsjuice.com. We're here live from the Stumble Bum Bar and Grill, Crown Point, Indiana. Nestor Garza Romero, Emil Soto Popinski, Kegabine out tonight. It is Amber Kegabine's birthday, so happy birthday to Amber Kegabine. Yes, Timmy, the producer, Patterson at the controls, and we've got a very special guest, Mr. Ray Flores of All Things Sports Radio. Ray, what's up, man? Gentlemen, great to talk to you guys. It has been way too long. I love I listen every single Thursday. And I have a couple of booze at the house, and I want beer, booze, and the only thing I'm missing is some bids. But as I turn on the whole bunch of boxing on dot com, I got the big cock girl, so that's all I can ask for, guys. <laughs> we are talking Anderson Silva of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, one of Dana White's um, protégés, so to speak, one of his money makers, definitely is calling out Mr. Roy Jones Jr. And and before we get all worried about, well, Roy doesn't know anything about MMA, Anderson Silva says, we don't need to fight MMA. Let's put boxing gloves on, get in a boxing ring, have boxing judges and a boxing announcer. Let's box, Roy. What are your thoughts on this, Ray Flores? Guys, I think that this is the worst thing that Anderson Silva could have done. I think it's a great, uh, it's a great marketing scheme. It is a great way for him to show that he is, you know, a, he's not afraid of anybody, that he's powerful, that he's this, that he's that. However, he is the best pound-for-pound fighter in mixed martial arts today. And as soon as he gets into the ring with Roy Jones Jr., there are already a lot of boxing pundits that like to shoot bars at the sport of mixed martial arts. And for, if for some reason, Anderson Silva were to step into the ring and get knocked out by Roy Jones Jr. and all the hard work, all the dedication, all the sacrifice that this boy has been trying to do to gain validity would be now in void because of that fight. And I think that, I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's, you know, they won't really think about this that way, but honestly, guys, we all know the way boxing pundits are, just people in general, how they view the sport of mixed martial arts because it is coming into the forefront, yet it is still on the fence. I think that something like this, the risk is way too much than the reward, guys. Well, stick around for a second, because I, I, want, I want your rebuttal to what Tim's about to say. Tim. Well, Ray, do you, do you think he's in a no-win situation because he's fighting Roy Jones? I mean, if he beats Roy, did he really beat a true boxer? I mean, Roy is on, a, on his downslide of his career, and we love Roy. Roy was the man. But he's fighting an old Roy Jones. Should he be fighting somebody like a Kelly Pavlik or something? I mean, I don't know who's exactly in the weight class there. But he should be fighting a guy on the top of his game, a younger guy, a guy with some speed and, and some power. Tim, I would be actually even more willing to fight if you were to fight somebody that is in the front of their careers. I'm not taking anything away again from Anderson Silva. He's the best pound for pound fighter in mixed martial arts today. But guys, if you look at it, his hands are dynamic for mixed martial arts. But he utilizes a lot of elbows, a lot of knees, a lot of kicks. That would not be a lot in a boxing match. And I honestly think a good Roy Jones Jr. even now would beat an Anderson Silva in boxing. That's just the way it is. It would be trying to... It, it, it just doesn't make any sense for Anderson Silva. I'd be, but to answer your question, I'd be more scared if we were to fight a Kelly Pavlik or somebody in the prime of their careers than Anderson Silva's weight class. But what does he, what does he have to win if he beats Roy, though? What is there to gain if he beats Roy? There is really nothing. All I can say is that see, mixed martial arts can't hang in there with boxers. But it's like apples to oranges, guys. The sport is already gaining a good reputation. The sport is already gaining all the coming into the mainstream American audience. A fight like this, it will gain, it will gain huge pay-per-view numbers. But the, the, in the end, the end result, the loss of effect would not really help out that much. The sport of mixed martial arts now a loss for Anderson Silva may hurt the sport greatly in terms of the general American public side. So, Ray, you're saying that this fight is too important for both sides to actually end up happening. I don't think it's too... I, regarding Roy Jones Jr., Chris, I don't think it's too important for boxing. Because yeah. boxing has been at the top of the heap in top ass sports for over 100 years. And if Anderson Silver were to beat a Roy Jones Jr., what a boxing critic, what are people going to say, well, Roy Jones Jr., exactly what Tim said, was on the downward spiral of his career. He was on the down end. He really... You can't justify the win. Now, if you were to not, if Roy Jones Jr. were to not Anderson Silva, then everyone can say, oh, see, what we thought all along, and Roy Jones Jr. isn't even that good anymore. So yeah. I honestly think it's a no-win situation for yeah. Mike Smith artist. Oh. And like I said, not taking anything away from Anderson Silva, but still, I think it's just too much of a risk, guys. We can go back to Holmes versus Cobb. Cobb was ranked fifth in the world in kickboxing, and we know what happened to him, so... 
I mean, it, it, that's Paul, Paul Driscoll throwing that comment out there. So, I mean, what does, what does Silva have to gain in this fight? That's what, that's what I'm trying to figure nothing. out. Nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing. He, he, he has a little bit to nothing. Guys, as, as we know, he's the, boy, he's the baddest man on the planet right now, be it boxing or MMA, just beautifully. Not put in the quotation marks, just beautifully. I mean, he's been able to tear through everybody and anybody in the sport of mixed martial arts. And if he were to fight Roy Jones Jr. in a boxing match, to take care of him, that just adds another notch on his belt. He doesn't need it, guys. There's no reason for him to take this fight outside of lighting his pockets, which, you know what, if I had the opportunity, I'd probably do the same thing. But in terms of his overall long term on the sport, he really doesn't have much to gain from it, guys. It's a fight that I totally do not want to see happen at all by any street for by any, uh, means, Nestor, talk to me a second about the importance of jabs. The jab in boxing is a, is a punch used to set up your other stuff. Unless you're David Hay and you're using it for a power shot. And right. we just watched that exactly. against Enzo Macronelli a second right. ago. The, the jab in boxing is a punch used. It's not supposed to be a power shot. It's no. something that the boxer, that your opponent has it's, to it's, deal it's with. It's a distraction. You have to deal with that punch before you can do your own thing. So it's a counter puncher's nightmare, the jab. Okay, right. But in mixed martial arts, a jab can be... A, a, it can be so, it can be toilet paper hanging off the bottom of your shoe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, these guys that do a, a, a fair bit of boxing in these matches, they totally leave the jab out of their of their MMA stand up because a jab is an opening for you to be grabbed and taken down to the ground. And if you're boxing, you don't want to go to the ground. No, and that's and I agree with Ray completely. I mean, Anderson Silva and the sport of mixed martial arts has absolutely nothing to gain from this, and so much more to lose. They're right, and, and 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 like Ray said, it, it's not going to be so much the hardcore fans because the hardcore fans are going to be hardcore fans no matter what happens. True. It's it's the it's the the fringe fans that boxing has that MMA has. Those are the ones that you're going to risk losing because now you're going to see this guy go in there and get beat by, possibly get beat by a Roy Jones Jr. who everybody knows is is on the downward side of his career, although he won't admit it. And, and he showed pretty well against... Jones uh, looked against great Trinidad. against Tito Trinidad. So, I, you know, as far as <laughs> I'm concerned, mixed martial arts has so much more to lose from this. In my eyes, if I was, if I was the, 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 the president of, 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 of UFC, I would be begging and pleading for this fight not to happen because this is just going to hurt his, his money and his, his corporation. But if you think about it, though, the answer to this question of why would he take the fight is the fact that Roy Jones is a name that everybody knows. Yes. If you're a boxing fan, everybody knows it. it. Everybody knows who Silva is. Sure. But, and, but, and, the, and the pay-per-view numbers are going to be huge. Exactly. It's not a matter of who have I beaten. That will finally be a fight that won't be about money, even though it will generate a ton and a half of it. Ray, what do you got on that? Guys, it, it's totally about the money. You guys no! Yes, it is. That is all about the money. That's all it is. In name, to make such large fans, he calls out Roy Jones Jr. I mean, he's pretty up Jim Rome talking about this fight. Anderson Silva is not really known to the general American public. It's because of Roy Jones Jr. He goes, so I guess risk. But guess what? Everybody's going to know who Anderson Silva is in the sporting world. Now, the Gus Jansson guy, he, uh, he takes that fight, turns over for about 15 minutes, then Roy Jones Jr. because he so happens to run the ball with him. Then everyone says, okay, Anderson Silva was a nobody. When every, all these martial arts fans know, still in their hearts, that he is still the most dominant fighter in the sport today. But as we mentioned, guys, it, it gives them 15 minutes worth of fame to general sports fans, but guys, it could hurt his career long term in the overall landscape of American sports. MMA is on the cusp of becoming a national art sport that is on broadcast top television. He made that he just signed a deal with CBS, and I'm pretty sure the UFC is working on a deal to get on five top television. And Anderson Silva would be a man who headlines some of those cards. So he just needs to wait, be patient, patience is as of the essence to allow himself to grow in his sport and not in boxing because that's what that is. They rush they're terrific fighters, but they're not go hardcore boxers, so... I cannot sit here and agree with you guys when you say that this is about money. This is all it's about. about. This is definitely it's not about money. Almighty dollar. This, it, he it, probably made a phone call to Oscar De La Hoya before he called Roy Jones Jr. Come on. 
You he, can't tell me. Was you, you can't tell Anderson me. Anderson Silva is the hottest thing in MMA right now. He does not need boxing. This is bigger than boxing. This is bigger than MMA. This is combining two sports that people are very passionate about. This is not about money, kids. If this is about up, bragging rights. This is about which sport is dominant. Forget money. This has nothing well, to do then, with money. Then, uh, then, he then, would, then he would take somebody then, in his yeah, prime exactly, at the top of his game. Exactly. He would take then an old Roy Jones. Yeah, then you're not going to go after Roy Jones. I love Kelly Pavlik, but not enough people know who he is. That's well, why he fine, picked Roy. Then, 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 pick, then, go in after, then go in after Floyd Mayweather. Why, why are you picking on, on a guy that's on the downward side of his career? Pick the baddest man in boxing. Pick the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in boxing. You want to be bad? Pick Sam Peter. Pick Vi uh, uh, Vladimir Klitschko. Pick one of the guys. That, don't pick a guy that's aged, that's on his way down. What's the point? Why don't you just fight, you know, Trinidad? Hell, Roy just did it. Fight him too. If you're going to base, is MMA bigger and better than boxing? Don't wouldn't you want it to be the the, the least amount of risk? Yeah, but dude, the first first words out of any boxer fan when you're talking about UFC versus boxing, if if. Floyd, or if uh, Roy loses, first thing I'm going to say is Roy's old. He should have fought somebody big. And if he wins... Absolutely, guys. And I totally agree with you. There would be a lot more. It would not be full-fledged. Finally, Mixed Marks Watch is being taken seriously, and we proved it by beating your best boxer. Kim said it. You mean it perfectly. He, we would have be beaten it in all that. Now, guys, my thing is this. Okay, we're going to fight Roy Jones Jr. We're going to fight the lead boxer. Okay, that's fine. Then why don't you get an elite boxer and bring that into the MMA ring, and we'll put him up against, you know, one of our guys, and then we'll make it evenly. We'll do one-on-one. -on -one. We'll, we'll do one sport in MMA, and we'll do one MMA, and we'll do one boxing box, and MMA fighter goes over to boxing, and boxer comes over to MMA. We'll do it that way. Then I think it's fair. And let's get rugby players to get in the NFL, Ray. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, uh, for, like, for, it, it, it's something I don't want to see, but I mean, for, for, I don't know. I mean, I hope and Anderson Silva, and like I said, I am a big fan of his, and have been following his career ever since he was out in London and dominating people on the cage race. But guys, honestly, he is trying. He's cashing a check that his mom cannot. Pick up. Ray, my problem with your argument here, and I love you, buddy. You know that I do is a couple months ago we were covering how Floyd Mayweather was talking about fighting MMA. You didn't have the same problem with it then. Well, I mean, I thought it would, I thought it would be interesting. Why? Because Floyd It's interesting Mayweather, if it's on your turf. Guy ...who is at the top of his career, and he'd be fighting me. He would not fight one of our top guys at all. But he would not put Floyd Mayweather Jr. up against somebody like a Sean Shirt. Up against like eight, even though you write a paper for crying out loud, we don't put him up against a guy who's decent, maybe a two and two record, somewhere along those lines. Not nothing too spectacular, but to have you know Anderson Silva think on a shirt down with a Hall of Famer Roy Jones Jr. It's not smart for Silva. He's not even an amateur boxer. I mean, yeah, he does a couple combinations he right from his MMA fight, but he's not even a, a, a low level professional boxer. <laughs> well, then that's the point. Is is they're fighting? They're fighting on the boxer's turf. On his terms, he, Anderson Silva is not a boxer. He's going to try to throw one leg kick and get disqualified. No, he, he picked, that'll be Antonio Inaki and Muhammad Ali. He picked he picked Roy because Roy is old and he thinks he has a chance of beating Roy. And Roy is the big name. Roy is the the future Hall of Famer that we talk well, about. People people will sit there and say, "Well, Roy's old. Roy's old." It's it's it's, it's interesting what four solid months of promotion will do for someone's memory, though. It's it's interesting what uh, what three months of um, HBO twenty four seven will do for a fight. You start to forget the fights that someone lost, and you and you start to forget about how old somebody is, and you start thinking about the good times. You start thinking about when you two were dating. You start thinking about the good stuff, and you sit there and say, you know what, this is going to be something. It, that's why the art of promotion is worth so much money. That's why we're talking about the almighty dollar. Yeah, it's this is all about the dollar because I no. didn't I didn't hear Silva talking smack to to Roy when Roy was on his back after he got knocked out by Tarver after he lost three matches. He just looked good in his last fight and now suddenly he wants to face Roy. It's all about the money. Roy looked good. Roy was a guy that dominated the sport for 14, 15 years, and he's a guy that if he goes in the ring with on the boxing terms is gonna get all the boxing fans to watch. And it's going to get all the MMA fans to watch, and it's going to be a huge pay-per-view, and it's going to push very close to the to the 
maximum numbers that we just saw with Floyd. You don't think that this is more than about money? No. This is not, not in the least. Oh my God, you guys are upset at me tonight. There is no way that this fight is about the money. This is Look, about, is mine bigger than yours? This is a professional, these are professional people that make their living doing this. If you honestly believe, if you are, and pardon me, my French, that naive to think that this is not about money and about the amount of pay-per-view dollars that this could bring in, then... I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. I think that's a what, bonus to this. I tell you what, Chris. I think that's a bonus, but that is not why this is coming If up. you want to prove to me that it's not about money, put it on HBO. Put it on Friday Night Fights. Yeah, fight put it on free. ESPN. I'm saying. Do volunteer work. No, they'll probably up the price of it. No, but look, that's not why this fight is going to happen. Look, and I, I don't think it'll end up happening anyway. But if it was to happen, it wouldn't happen so someone could get rich. Well, although, although that's why a promoter does this. But the fighters are not doing this for money. The fighters are not going to fight one another because of the huge payday that will be attached. Okay. Roy won't get paid more for fighting an MMA fighter than he would fighting Trinidad or any of oh, these other guys. Come on. They're all getting percentage of the purse. The purse is going to be they're huge. They're percentage of the pay-per-views. What did you, do you, you, you think Oscar didn't get, Oscar got his percentage of the pay-per-view? You think Floyd, Floyd did yeah, too? You Oscar think they're going to fight again just because they like each other? They enjoy dancing around the ring for 12 rounds? That is different. How is it different? Is, that is different because... I respect your opinion wholeheartedly, but he used to deal with Anderson Silva. It is about financial for him. Why? Because in his last fight, he was a headliner. He beat the prize middleweight champion to unify the titles in, in many aspects. Because of that bumper about fighting the world today, he only made $140,000. He would make easily at least 10 times more than what he made in that fight with this one. Without a doubt. Oh, he make, would make so much money. He'd make millions. He would make in this fight probably what he would make in five or six UFC fights. Way That's more than that. So, way more than that, Ray. Yeah. If you said he made a hundred thousand, he's going to make at least probably five or six million minimal for this fight. Absolutely, which is why he's smart. I mean, he's a smart man. I mean, he knows that he can sound so far financially and that he can fight maybe three or four, maybe two or three times a year instead of fighting four or five times a year for the Dude, UFC. So, I mean, you know, it's totally financial for him because then he's able to get more sponsors. He's able to generate more of a, you know, of a mainstream American audience. If he loses, so what? He gets paid five or six million dollars, which is something that UFC fighters don't even make in their entire careers. Right, he rides off into the sunset. And you know what? And, and I go to work every every morning, and I I don't do it because I you know I love it. I do it because it's a payday. Okay? Got it. All right. That and, I know. And I'm telling you, this is exactly what this is. This is this is Anderson Silva. This is looking to cash a paycheck. This is one of the biggest pay per view events that you can think of. It you, would be the biggest pay per view okay. of all time. There it you would, go. No, I'll tell you, I am completely conceited. There that. you go. And, and you got a guy that made $140,000 for a championship <laughs> that fight. That is not the only reason this fight would happen. Okay. All right. He's got the entire world of MMA on his shoulders back in him. And he's him. making a buck forty a fight. He's getting his butt whooped for a buck forty a fight. Do you honestly well, believe... He's putting 12-ounce gloves on and do, do you, it. Do you honestly believe you wouldn't climb into the ring for five or six million dollars, even if you, all you had to do was play Curtis NTN and fall down in the first 30 seconds of a fight? Come on, dude. I'd call him Clifford because that's what his mom named him. But <laughs> you know who I was talking about. Yes, and, and and that's exactly what you would do. Tell me if and, and you wouldn't as a school teacher, you make X amount of dollars in this school system. If somebody walked over and goes, "I'll pay you ten times that much to come teach at my school," are you going to go? No, no, I love these children. I'm staying here. That is a, the dumbest possible. It's the same concept. That is not the it's, same concept. Well, sure. You're telling you're telling you're telling me that this is because it mine's bigger than yours. No, it isn't. This is because his paycheck will be bigger here than it is his, with his. I think that's a nice bonus to all of this. Yes, he will make more. I'm conceding the fact that he'll make more money. Roy, I don't think would make more than he ever would. He wants Silva. I agree with you on the fact that Silva wants to come over and say, "I beat a boxer at boxing." I agree with that you. On that is what the that's what the fans are going to care about. Not not how much money he made. But the fans don't care. Right. The fans don't care what, fan, what a fighter makes. The fans are gonna. That's what the fans are gonna see is MMA versus boxing. And Silva knows that that is gonna draw the fans, and he's gonna get paid. That's why he picked Roy. This fight is for money. 
all fights at some point are about money. But the reason this fight came out is because mine is bigger than yours. No. Roy looked good, and it was going to be a payday. That's where it started. And it looks like that's where it's going to end. Ray Flores, All Things Sports, we love you, buddy. Thank you for stopping in. Uh, what do you have to say for us? John, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me and for, 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 for me allowing you to join you. Yeah, I was going to say. I look forward to hanging out with uh, Amo, the birthday boy. I'll make sure to uh, send an alcoholic cocktail on his way tomorrow. <laughs> Boxer goes to fight an MMA fight, then you're cool with it. No, no, no. It makes it a little more intriguing, but here's the Oh, of course it does. I can honestly say, you know, I'm a little bit of a match maker. I wouldn't want to see, I wouldn't want to put a, a, a top level boxer up against a top level MMA, MMA fighter. We want to make sure that it's up against someone who's average. And then we'll see where it goes from there. But still, it's up with oranges. They should not at all ever go into this like water and oil, guys. It just does not mix at all. Good point, and we'll end on that. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll be right back with you with the Golden League Fighter You Should Know tonight on your Bullet Punch Boxing Hour, brought to you by George Rogie Insurance. www.hssp.cc.sportsjuice.com.